Good morning, everyone, here in the room, uh, especially on the panel and also on the live stream. And uh, good morning to everyone who hacked into the cameras of our phones and is watching from there. Uh, welcome to the first press conference of today from the 47th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in snowy Davos. Um, it is a topic that we are dedicating this panel today that requires uh, all of us, especially companies, to be wide awake. So welcome to this early morning press conference. Um, the topic is, in fact, how well are companies prepared to withstand cyber attacks? You know, the World Economic Forum has been talking a lot about the fourth industrial revolution. This is, if you will, the dark side of the fourth industrial revolution that we are taking a closer look uh, at today. And uh, I'm very pleased that we're joined by an expert panel to tackle this topic today. Um, let me quickly introduce my fellow panelists. To my immediate left, uh, I'm joined by Derek O'Halloran, who's the, uh, a forum colleague, first of all, but more importantly, he's the head of the Systems Initiative on Shaping the Future of Digital Economy and Society at the World Economic Forum. Um, on his immediate left, we are joined by Walter Baumeyer, the senior partner and managing director of the Boston Consulting Group. Right in the center of our panel, we're joined by Victoria Espinel. She's the president and chief executive officer of BSA, the Software Alliance, um, and uh, many of you watching might still remember her as the White House coordinator for IP enforcement. So uh, a public sector experience there as well, which is important to have for this topic, um, of course. And uh, last but definitely not least, we're joined by Mike Nefkins. Uh, Mike is the uh, executive VP and general manager of enterprise services at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, um, based in the US. Welcome on the panel. Um, without further ado, Derek, um, we've uh, brought together a wide group of, of stakeholders to tackle the issue, and we have uh, worked on a first of its kind set of principles. Um, share with us, please, why is this a topic that's important to the forum, and what are these principles about, please? Sure, thank, thank you, Georg. Yeah, so first of all, perhaps it's worth highlighting or, or explaining, I mean, what is the problem here? What is it that we're, we're, we're what is the problem we're trying to solve? So, uh, part of the uh, part of the work the forum has done, and what we see across all industries, is a tremendous wave of digitization that is transforming business models and the way that companies operate. Um, this is changing how they interact with customers, is changing how they interact with with their suppliers, with partners, and it's opening up new business, new innovations, new business models, and new opportunities. But any new business uh, opportunity comes with risks. And just as if you enter a new market, you consider the risks there. As you create new business, business models, which are based on digitization, you would also need to think about what are the risks that go along with that. Some of these risks are driven by, we might term, bad actors. So there's, a, there's, a, a, there's an ill intent. And some of them may be broader, uh, that, that not necessarily driven by, by hackers or bad actors, but simply there's, there's risks involved in, in any new uh, uh, endeavor. The challenge, however, is that as this is a very new and emerging set of, of issues and challenges, many companies, in particular the boards in those companies, don't feel adequately uh, equipped to be able to understand and manage these risks and guide their companies to, to, to manage these risks in the same way that they would many other risks. So what we've done over the past year uh, with the help of uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise and with BCG and actually a, a, a much broader group of companies from several different industries including not just technology but healthcare and automotive and infrastructure uh, and financial services and we've worked with experts and executives within those companies across different functions from risk and security and, 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 and operations and then also with some policymakers and with some academia to understand what are some of the leading practices out there that some companies have already started to develop and can we develop a set of uh, tools or a framework uh, and, and a set of principles for, to guide boards to be able to accelerate the adoption of these leading practices uh, in, a, in a coherent way across different sectors. So this, is, this is, has been the endeavor. Um, the output from this is a, a, is a, is a report uh, which in fact is really a set of tools. Um, there are three tools uh, in there. First of all, there are a set of ten principles for boards 
to guide their behavior and their activity and their interactions with their executive and management teams. Secondly, there is a cyber risk framework uh, that gives that allows them to understand and contextualize risks as they emerge and as they become relevant to their organization. And then finally, because there are so many new technologies hitting us at the same time, we've also added in a uh, board guide to emerging technologies to help boards understand how they should be thinking about emerging technologies like IoT, uh, AI, and even the second wave of, wave of cloud. Thank you, Derek. Walter, let's, let's hear from you. I'm sure many of your clients have concerns about the issues and are probably beginning more and more to understand the, the implications, but what are the strategic implications of that, of that issue? Sure. Allow me to share three strategic guidelines, I would call it. <coughs> Advancing cyber resilience is not a standalone discipline. It has to be derived from business strategy. It has to be embedded in business decision. And the reason is simple. You cannot protect everything to the same level. Therefore, a company, an organization, has to define and derive its ground tools, as we call it. So, for example, consumer data or intellectual property. And they have to understand what kind of business processes I attach to them, who is accessing it. And that means at the end that you have to have um, integration of cyber risk into your all overall risk management system. Secondly, it's about capabilities. Because an organization needs the capability to deal with incidents. And in today's world, unfortunately, an organization has to accept that it will be breached. That's unfortunately the new normal, ladies and gentlemen. And therefore, you have to deal with detecting this breach quickly. You have to respond to it. You have to recover. And that means that this kind of capabilities have to build up. It's not done in a day for sure. And third, and definitely one of the biggest challenges, everything I've just have said, it's a highly dynamic process. It's not a one-time exercise. It's an arm race out there between the attackers and the defenders. And that means that also boards and the senior executives have to daily basically deal with this issue and have to understand what's going on. And coming back to your point, uh, digitization, bringing up new products, digital products, you have to make a trade-off decision between what's my time to market for a new digital product versus how much effort do I spend, for example, into security architecture. Thank you, Walter. Victoria, um, we've been joking back in the speaker's room whether you'll be an optimist or, or a pessimist. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot here again, but um, more and more companies are moving their operations into the cloud. They're, they're digitizing. Um, what are the implications of that and, and what are the risks you see? Um, so, you know, software is at the forefront of the digital economy because of software. People and companies have access to computing power that is unprecedented because of software. We are at what is just the very beginning of a data revolution, although it has already had enormous impact. So we are, you know, the software industry is helping companies do what they do better. It's also changing how each of us lives our life every single day. One of the changes that is uh, bringing about those really increase the importance of this issue that we're here to talk about today for cybersecurity. And you know, the way the software industry sees it, we see this very much as a shared responsibility. So when I say that, I mean shared between governments, uh, between the software industry, and between the companies across every sector um, of the economy. Because as Walter pointed out, there is no sector of the economy that is not at risk today. Um, so I would say it's great to see the World Economic Forum focusing on this. I think it is very, it is essential to responsible leadership to have boards focused on this issue. Um, it's, it is, I think, the byproduct of many positive things that are happening, but as, as has been said on this panel, with good things come additional risks. I think it is a manageable risk, but it's clearly something that we need to be focusing on more and more. Um, and it's great to see the, the World Economic Forum bring its thought leadership to this issue. Thank you. Uh, Mike, um, you're one of uh, 1,200 senior executives uh, from, the, from the business community here in Davos. 
Um, I know you've been talking to a lot of boards around the world, but uh, if you talk to your fellow uh, business uh, representatives here, have, do you have the feeling they have the necessary awareness of the threat and, and the, the, the steps of action they need to take? You know, I think, um, I think that's finally starting to emerge. Um, we've been here a couple years now, and we're finally, I think, seeing that the senior executives out there are realizing, and I think uh, Walter said it earlier, it's not a ma matter of if you're going to get breached now, it's a matter of when. And um, what that means is that the risk is now real for every executive, for every board, not just the one that ends up in the paper, uh, you know, where you think, hey, that's not going to happen to us. Everyone knows it's now a real risk. And what we've been able to do, I think, with this paper and with the toolkit is we've given boards a, a real first view of, you know, um, where to get started, um, how, to, how to get trained, um, what are the best practices, what are the principles, and um, how can you get access to experts to help you. Frankie, if you look at the makeup of most boards these days, um, you know, there's not a lot of technology experience in those boards, let alone uh, a deep knowledge of, of how to handle uh, cyber issues and um, you know Walter said it perfect when you talk about you know how you have to protect an enterprise then when you're breached how you detect and respond and then most importantly how you recover and um, this is what we've really set out to do in this uh, in this paper is we've been able to uh, you know put those principles in place and it gives a board a place to start um, so that they can become more educated in uh, in the threats of cyber and um, you know they have access to experts and uh, whether it be on the technology technology side or on the consulting side, uh, so they have a place to get started and they can start to manage their risk. Thank you very much. So um, uh, saying that they're finally understanding means they're not there yet, uh, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good that you uh, that you raise that awareness. Yeah, and you know, I don't think we're, we're ever going to get there because this is a constant cat and mouse game, and that's also a real learning, right, on cyber. Um, the threats change on a daily basis. So, so it's a question of being agile enough and making sure that the community is linked in a way that, um, that as we fight cyber threats together across government agencies, companies, um, and other forums, that, uh, that we can keep up and, um, and really be one step ahead of the threat actors versus a step or two behind. Yeah, maybe if I could just build on that, actually, be, you know, in addition to the, to the question of, you know, why is this important? I mean, why is it important now? And, wh and why did we particularly focus on, 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 this, uh, on this topic and this effort right now? And I think it is because of th that, the, that rapidly changing nature of the technology landscape. So you really, over the past, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, there's been an awful lot of work in progress made in the area of information security. And there have been, there are companies that have leading practices around uh, information security. Uh, unfortunately, pretty much every study done by not just ourselves but, uh, but elsewhere through that period have indicated that the level of board attention to these issues has been historically low. But there's been a cost of doing business that people have been willing to accept um, because of the threat landscape was, was the nature of the threat landscape. Now, information, the stakes are being raised in information security, but more importantly, the stakes are being raised through a whole set of new technologies, such as Internet of Things. And once we start connecting physical devices, then all of the stakes are raised. And the kinds of harms and risks that we're talking about are significantly more impactful uh, in many cases than uh, financial loss which is often the case around information security. And so if there are things that we know we should be doing around information security, we should all just be doing that. We should just be doing it because there's a whole new set of threats coming down the road that we're going to need to be very agile and very quick to respond and figure out how we, how we, how we manage those. Can I just pick up on the information security point? So when I was at the White House, I spent a lot of uh, my focus was on economic espionage um, against U.S. companies. And one of the challenges that we had is while it was, it was evident to me and others that were working in this space, the scale of the threat we were seeing, we were, when we were talking to U.S. companies, they were either unaware of the level of risk or they were essentially hopeful that it was not going to happen to them and so they wouldn't have to uh, invest in the resources necessary to try to mitigate the threat. 
Now, I do think that has changed. Um, as has been alluded to on the panel, I think we're in a process of changing. I think um, heightened awareness at the board level is extremely important. But I think that that challenge still exists. And I think one of the things that can be helpful as governments and businesses work together is more on information sharing. So you're talking about information security. Um, the government has uh, access to information. Companies have access to information. For, for various reasons, there has been reluctance to share that information as much as, as would be helpful. And so I think that is one of the areas, when I talk about shared responsibility between companies and governments, it's to work together to be sharing information as efficiently and, and in real time as, 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 as is possible. Yeah, and I think that's finally starting to change, where it used to be you didn't want to talk about your cyber problems because you were desperate afraid it would end up in the paper and it would hurt your brand. And I think um, CEOs are now starting to share um, as they talk to agencies and, and others. And the other big change that, uh, that I think has happened as well is beforehand the executive team would update the board and the board would be satisfied with the update and it wouldn't be a problem until it was a problem. Now what we're seeing is that boards are now getting more savvy and they're starting to question the executive teams and really being able to ask uh, to understand the risk, the risk level and then being able to adjust based on what needs to be there. And that's a big shift that's happened in the last year. And Victoria, I think what you said is right. It's because the boards are starting to get access to more data. And as they get data and they're sharing and more CEOs and more boards are talking about the cyber risks, um, they're becoming a, a bit more educated. And maybe to, to summarize what you just uh, said, why it is so hard for board uh, to really understand the challenge in cybersecurity? Because you need essentially three things. You need the leadership, you just referred to it, from the board to the senior executives. You need collaboration because you basically fail if you believe that the, your CIO will solve the problem. No, you need collaboration among all departments, among all employees within an organization, and you have to reach out to your peers, to government, to cooperate, to share this information, which is not always an easy uh, thing to do in our legislation. And third, not um, the, the least for sure, is determination because it's complex, the problem. It's not just into your own vicinity, so to speak, and it's highly dynamic. And that was the, the, the mental shift from, okay, it's fine to have it once a year on my agenda in the board meeting, exactly right. and yeah. now I have to even actively respond if something happens and have to know how to react and not you know, look m to my assistant and ask, where is our business continuity manual, so to speak. Thank you, Walter. And I think that's a, you're building a great bridge for me here because we did ask our social media audience before for questions and kind of what, what's at the top of your mind there. And I'm, I'm going to combine two of the questions here because they have a similar angle. One question was, so will we see more chief technology officers moving to the role of CEO in companies? And the second one was, when will the IT security person be a C-suite level position? Um, I think you, you, you touched on that, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit. Yeah, so um, those are two really interesting questions. I'll start with the last one. Uh, the first is um, absolutely the tech savviness of, uh, of the IT team. We're seeing a lot of changes where, in some cases, the CIO is not even responsible anymore for cybersecurity, where cyber, uh, the, the CISO is reporting directly into the CEO, or in some cases, directly into the risk committee or the audit committee. So we're seeing a lot of governance changes there, which is driving more education of the board. And, um, and we absolutely believe that, um, you, know, you know, across all the executives, uh, the technology savviness needs to increase so that they understand the risks they take as they digitize their business. And then the second question you asked about the CEO, look, I don't think it's possible to be a CEO without having some understanding of technology. Um, if you talk to most CEOs, um, you know, nine out of 10 right now, one of their first agenda points is that they have to go digitize their business. And that takes really understanding technology and the threats of associated with that where cyber comes into play. Thank you. You want to add to that, Victoria? Uh, no, I'd agree with that. I think you're already starting to see the move of um, having uh, chief security officers, CIOs, CTOs being part of, directly part of the board discussions. Um, and I think um, 
that's been a positive move. I think that's something you're going to continue to see. Um, on the question of CTOs becoming CEOs, I think good CEOs can come from all sorts of backgrounds. But I would completely echo, I think every CEO right now has to have a little bit of their portfolio being the CTO um, and being very focused on technology. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We also had a question from a gentleman or lady with the name Evil Cat, um, <laughs> but it was a very good question. The question is, do universities need, for example, in MBA programs, need to uh, put a heavier focus on, on the issue? Does this need to be more part of the business curriculum as well? Um, it's a bit of an off-topic question, but I think we usually have a very young live stream audience, so that might be of interest. Maybe you can, you can share your thoughts on that. If, if I may ask, I couldn't agree more. And yesterday we had an interesting session on the future of artificial intelligence. And um, the first topic they picked, surprisingly, was cybersecurity. And the, the CEO of this company said, look, one of the, the, uh, the uh, the problems we have in a company to find the right skills on the market. It's basically try. And that's a universal, I would say even global problem that at the moment there are not the right skills. Uh, it's a fantastic topic. It combines the new things like digitization, uh, IoT. Um, it also shall hopefully then enable direct access to the board. So I, I fully agree that in academia currently this is a little bit overlooked, and hopefully it will change soon. Yeah. And if I, could add, I, I would say even go beyond the business, go, go beyond MBA. So um, Berkeley is, uh, is, I think, perhaps announcing here at Davos that they are going to be undertaking a new initiative to be able to teach computer science to every undergraduate student that comes into Berkeley. I think that's enormously positive. I know my alma mater, Georgetown Law School, just launched four weeks ago the Georgetown Law and Tech Policy, and one of the things that institute is going to do is make sure that computer science and coding is available to every legal student, um, every law student that goes to Georgetown. I think beyond, it's, imp it's important, as we've been talking about in this discussion, to have the board and have business Business leaders focus on cybersecurity, but it is also important, I think, to have the legal system um, focus on cybersecurity. Software has such an enormous impact on how we live our lives, and so we need to have lawyers and policymakers and business leaders that are all as immersed in technology as possible and understand it as well as possible so they can make the right decisions, not just in the business community, but for society at large. Yeah, it is one of the top one or two questions I get from boards, which is, where do I go train my people? Mm -hmm. And it is a real problem. And it goes not just where do I train my people, where do I get good people that understand cyber and the risks? And it is a tough one. And um, I would tell you that um, <clears throat> I think there's some great classes emerging at universities. So I think some of the younger talent will have a, a better base. Um, but I believe it's going to be up to the technology industry to start driving certifications um, in the area of cyber, or at least in the different parts of cyber. Uh, no one really does that now. It's one of the things at HP that we're looking at doing, but I think it's going to take a real collaboration across technology companies to really launch a certification program so you can get li different levels of certification in cyber, and it'll really, really take that field to the next level. Yeah, I mean, if, if I, I mean, when we started working on this maybe five, six years ago, um, I, a, a similar question came as the question from Evil Cat uh, there. And <laughs> I remember asking everyone I knew, does anyone know of programs like this? And no one did. And I actually had a piece of paper stuck on my, uh, with the wall of my desk say, you know, I'd say it would take down the first time that, that we had a cybersecurity program at an MBA school. And that, that I saw the first one, I think it was three years ago. I think it was at Oxford uh, that, that they did. Now they're proliferating. And you see, also within the engineering schools, how do you work with the business side of the house in order to be able to, to explain? Um, really, and, and really what, what, what this underlines, it's the same as the, the tools for the board. This is not about making everybody in the world experts in cybersecurity. That's not going to happen, that's not the point. That's, the point is that we need, everyone needs to have basic literacy in the topic. Just like boards are not experts in all of the different aspects of accounting or risk, or whatever, they know what questions to ask and they, have, they know what risk, what, they have a basic literacy. And that applies at all levels. Uh, yesterday I had a meeting with a number of ministers from South Asia, including ministers from Sri Lanka and, and, and Bangladesh and Pakistan. And they were talking about the programs they're putting in place from all the way through from primary, secondary and tertiary, uh, about technology in general and the risks that this involves as well. So th th this, is, this is really something which is widespread across, uh, across our, all areas, and we need to be embedding it uh, in, our in our education practices. 
Thank you, Derek. Um, are there any questions in the room? If not, I have the opportunity to get in my most snarky question yet. Um, and the question came, uh, I don't remember the, the account name of, of the, the person who asked, but um, do companies have the right to hack back? Any volunteers to answer that one? I think, so it's a, I think it's a really interesting question. And um, I think there are two parts to that. One is do nation states have a right to hack back is one question. And, uh, and the other is do companies. Um, I would tell you right now that the resources and costs to try to hack back um, you know, are going to far, far outweigh the benefit from a company perspective. Um, you know, I think uh, companies are more focused on protecting themselves, being able to detect and respond and then recover. Um, if they're going to get into the hacking back business, um, number one, it would introduce a lot more risk. And number two, the cost and effort to do that will be huge. So I don't really see that as a viable business option. Um, I think when you take a look at nation states, I think it's a different question there. Uh, but from a company perspective, um, I just don't see a future in that for, for corporations. Thank you, Mike. I, I thought it was interesting the way the question was phrased. It was quiz, phrases would not companies have a right to hack back. Um, and I, I think actually, I think the response is, is more sort of what are the practical implications of it? And is that something that makes, comp makes sense for companies to do? I think in the real world, that's probably more relevant than whether or not there's a theoretical right for them to hack back or not. That's well said. Mm, that makes sense. Very good. These were my snarky questions. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for, for being good sports and, and, and answering them. Um, I think, mindful of your full schedules, it's time for me to close this press conference. Thank you all for being here, and thank you for watching. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.